When Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him asking for help. Lord, he said, my servant lies at home paralysed, suffering terribly. Jesus said to him, shall I come and heal him? When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue leaders named Jairus came, and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. He pleaded earnestly with him, my little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. Have you ever noticed how weirdly interruptible Jesus was? He was the greatest man of his time, of any time. He also carried the mission strategy, the vision and the purpose of the redemption of mankind and the revelation of God. He was the most strategic, the most vision-fueled leader of all time. He really couldn't have been more focused. And yet, as he's walking down the road, mid-strategy as it were, constantly we have these stories of people coming up to Jesus and asking, can you come to my home? Can you heal my daughter? Jesus, can you just reroute? Can you change your plans? Can you change direction? Will you come into my home? And Jesus' response time and time again was, yeah, where do you live? Let's go. So was Jesus distractible and unfocused? In our purpose-driven strategies and plans, are we more focused than Jesus? Or do we just need to redefine what focus really means? Because for Jesus, on his mission to redeem humanity, so much of his time was spent having meals with people, coming in to their homes, meeting their families, spending time with them, sharing life with them. Jesus was constantly invited to give of himself and his answer time and again was yes. Jesus' yes becomes so well known that he actually develops this reputation of being a glutton and a drunk because of the people that he spends time with, the homes that he goes into, the people that he shares his life with and the way that he gives of himself to those who ask. The way in which Jesus lived his life on the earth in this interruptible way actually takes the ancient practice of hospitality and turns it upside down and inside out. See, when we hear hospitality, we often think of inviting someone around to our house for a meal or offering them our spare bed for the night. But then there's Jesus who had no home or spare room to offer. And yet somehow he takes this practice of hospitality and turns it upside down by showing us that hospitality at its core is not about offering a spare room. It is about offering a part of ourselves. Jesus' interruptibility, his issuing of invitation and saying yes to invitations, particularly to the lost, the broken and the unlovable, was strikingly prioritised in his kingdom strategy. I wonder, where might your sense of purpose be overtaking your prioritising of people? Where are you too important to be interruptible? Jesus' radical hospitality poses a big challenge. The Celtic saints that we have been looking at throughout this series really rose to this challenge and responded to the call of Jesus to hospitality in beautiful ways as they sought to feed the hungry and clothe the naked and provide shelter for the poor wanderer. And as they invited people through their doors or brought hospitality onto the streets, they transformed their kitchen table into a front line of mission as they joyfully offered of themselves and shared their lives with people. And as they offered parts of themselves, they also offered parts of Jesus. There is one Irish saint named Bridget and she was the daughter of a king. 
but she had this rather annoying habit of constantly emptying the kitchen cupboards to give food away to the poor. What a nuisance, said the king, so she was kicked out of her parents' home. So instead, she went on to found the famous monastery at Kildare, one of the first to be founded and run by a woman. And at the core of their practice was this beautiful act of hospitality. This kind of radical hospitality, kindness, this subversive willingness to be interruptible, has always and will always shine so brightly to the community around us as we share of our lives and our resources. It shows such freedom from fear and independence and individualism and offers an unmissable aroma of the Kingdom of God to a hungry world. How can we be too focused and too busy to live out hospitality in that kind of way? What if your kitchen table was just as important as your Sunday church services to the salvation plan of your city? So as you pray the exam in this week, Look back over your day and ask God, what were the interruptible moments when I could have shared something of myself, something of God with those around me? And as you think to tomorrow, ask, how might you offer yourself, share your life, share yourself with those around you? Is there a neighbour that you could share a hot drink and some cake with? or some friends that you could invite round for a meal. And as you share food and drink together, share something deeper with them, something lasting of the kindness of Christ in your midst. When we offer ourselves, our resources, our time, our hearts, we do so out of the riches that we have received from Christ. Extravagance suits our giving. In a world that doesn't know it's hungry, how might you be an aroma today of something different, something of the kingdom? Out of the overflow of all that we have received from Jesus, as we go throughout our week, let's not think, what does the world deserve? Or what are the people around me asking for? Rather, let's ask ourselves, what do I have to give?